Okay, let's begin to find out the magnitude of the centripetal force that would be acting on a particle that is undergoing circular motion on a circle in a circle of radius r. Okay. Now, in the first case, and I'll give you two ways. I'll basically I'll show you things from two vantage points. In the first one, I'm keeping it simple and I'm considering that the particle is moving with uniform velocity. So there is no tangential acceleration. So whatever we're going to find out here, that will be centripetal acceleration. Now suppose it's the particle started from here. So the velocity vector at this point is perpendicular, is vertically up. Okay. Okay. Now after some time, the particle came here. So the velocity vector again will be tangential like this okay now let us zoom this section one first velocity vector is like this and the velocity vector latter is like this okay this angle is theta. Suppose it covered a small angle. This is a very small angle. I'm showing you an enlarged view. This very small angle is theta. And after covering an angular distance of theta, it came here and this position vector to this position and the velocity vector is like this. Now, vectors we know we, we can move them parallel to itself. Now, I move this vector parallel to itself suppose like this fine if this angle is theta this angle is also theta this angle is 90 degree because velocity vector is tangential so this angle is 90 minus theta this again is 90 so this angle is theta easy to see from basic geometry now acceleration the basic definition of it we know acceleration is change in velocity upon time taken for that change to happen. Change in velocity is always final velocity minus initial velocity upon delta t. This is what acceleration is. All right, velocity vector has changed. Its magnitude has not, but its direction has. And the change in velocity vector is final minus initial. Final velocity vector is this vector. And initial vector is this. Minus of initial velocity vector, we know negative of a vector is just opposite to that vector of the same magnitude and in the direction just opposite to that. So if this is the initial velocity vector and this is the final velocity vector, this is the initial velocity vector, the minus vi will be this, this will be minus vi. All right. Now all we have to do is do the summation of vf and minus vi to find the change in velocity or we can do that here itself to just by changing the arrow this the this is vi and if we change the arrow in the opposite direction this is minus vi now what we have to do we have to do the summation of vf and minus vi to find the change in velocity and summation you know how we do it the summation of velocity vector, I will use the triangular law of vector addition. This vector plus this vector, the length of both the vector would be the same because the magnitude is same, would be this vector. Okay, now, this angle, just for legibility, I have drawn considerably large, but this angle is very, very small. We are looking at, in a time period, a very small time period. So that this angle is very small. The sum of internal angles of a triangle is 180 degree. So this angle plus this angle plus this angle should be 180 degree. This is very small. So virtually the summation of these two angles should be 180 degree. And these, this is an isosceles triangle. This vector and this vector are the same because they are velocity vectors and the velocity is keeping constant throughout the motion. I'm considering uniform circular motion. So this angle and this angle would be 90 degree actually. Okay, because this angle would be very small, just for legibility, I have drawn it large, but 
considering the situation that this angle is very small this angle and this angle would be 90 degree now from here again we can see actually this is the change in velocity vector vf minus vi the summation of these two is this vector from triangular law of vector addition so this velocity vector is actually change in velocity this we are looking for acceleration if we divide this vector by time we get the acceleration vector so time doesn't have any direction the direction of acceleration will come from this vector change in velocity vector now change in velocity vector has this direction now this is perpendicular to tangential velocity you can see change in velocity is perpendicular to the final velocity because this is 90 degree now in a circle this velocity tangential velocity is perpendicular to radius now radius is perpendicular to tangential velocity we know this is also perpendicular to tangential velocity that means this should be parallel to the radius although it doesn't look so because this triangle this angle is not very small if you make this angle very small this this vector will look parallel to the radius vector it doesn't look here because we have drawn this angle very large if we make this theta very small then this vector would be parallel to this radius vector that is the case because this radius vector is perpendicular to the velocity vector and this change in velocity vector is also coming perpendicular to velocity vector so this must be parallel to radius vector that means it must pass through the center if you're looking for infinitesimally very small distance then this vector must pass through the center so again we can see that the change in velocity vector is passing through the center and the acceleration has a direction of change in velocity vector that means this acceleration that is just changing the velocity direction of velocity must pass through the center this is the field okay so first thing i have shown you vector vectorially that the change in velocity vector would be passing through the center that means the acceleration responsible for the change and hence the force must pass through the center and that's why we call it centripetal force okay now the job is to find that force that we can find that force if we find the change in velocity vector the magnitude of this delta v now delta v we know is the vector summation delta v is the vector summation of vf minus vi or it's the subtraction of vector vf minus vi we know the formula of a vector minus b vector don't we so delta v the magnitude direction we have known it is passing through the center now we have to find the magnitude the magnitude of this would be vf squared plus vi squared plus minus 2 vf vi cos theta isn't it now it's a uniform velocity the particle is having uniform circular motion so the magnitude of vf and vi will be the same let me call that as v so this will be root over v squared plus v squared minus 2v squared cos theta all right now this would come out as delta v is equal to we can bring 2v square outside the root so it will be root 2v and inside the root you will have 1 minus cos theta so this is the magnitude of change in velocity now what is the acceleration acceleration is change in velocity upon time taken for that change 